name is Patty Wagstaff, one of the most celebrated aerobatic pilots of all time. Three-time U.S. national aerobatic champion, she is the first woman to win this title. Because of her achievements, Patty has been honored by the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum as a pioneer of flight, and her Goodrich Extra 260 aircraft occupies the same gallery at the Smithsonian as Amelia Earhart's Lockheed Vega. I have to admit, what I do seems like a pretty dangerous way to make a living. I suppose that's part of the appeal, why so many people come out to see me fly and to see me take these risks. But as fellow pilots, I'll let you in on a little secret. There's risk, all right. As you know, any time you climb into an aircraft, there's risk. But over the years, I've learned to minimize that risk by careful preparation, training, planning, common sense, and constant situational awareness. Attention to safety keeps me alive in the air. But safety doesn't begin at the top of an inverted loop. Safety begins on the ground before you get in your airplane. As pilots, most of us have seen a great deal of change in airport operations over the past few years. Today, there are nearly 70 million tower operations annually, and the number is growing each year. Pilots are challenged with more and more complex air traffic procedures, more complicated airport layout design. More and more, it is an environment of very real risk. But just as Patty Wagstaff has developed strategies for mitigating risk in the air, pilots can do the same on the ground by following standard procedures, such as using airport diagrams and planning their taxi routes. The great majority of runway incursions are caused by pilot error. And the great majority of those errors, more than 70%, are caused by general aviation pilots. Those of us who have been flying for a while remember that they didn't teach us much about runway safety back in the days when we were in training. In recent years, that's changed. The FAA has developed a number of educational programs and strategies to help pilots improve runway safety. In fact, with more than 650,000 pilots and more than 240,000 aircraft all conducting millions of operations around the clock, it's amazing how safe our airports are. But still, with the best of training, collisions can happen at any airport, at any time, to any pilot. We may be good pilots, but we are also human. And sometimes we make very human mistakes. And ground Say again. Runway incursions are most often the result of a loss of situational awareness. For a variety of reasons, the pilot becomes confused by the airport's signs and layout or doesn't listen to or understand the controller's instructions, or simply fails to follow instructions. Cessna 3 Sierra Papa. Hold short, runway 26 left. 453 Sierra Papa, hold short, runway 26 left. Cessna 3 Sierra Papa, you're over the whole line. Often, this is because he or she is unfamiliar with the airport. The pilot's fatigued or is distracted by something in the cockpit. For a few critical seconds, pilots lose track of where they are in relation to their surroundings. You can imagine how important it is for me to focus on situational awareness. In the air, my life depends on it. If I don't know precisely where I am and where I'm going, and the tasks required to get me there, the consequences could be catastrophic. And the same goes for you, and for me, on the ground. One of the first keys to situational awareness is attention to detail even before you start your engine. Just as we always study area charts and weather information before we fly, it's important to be thoroughly familiar with the airport's layout before we taxi. Every airport is different, so it's important to obtain and study airport diagrams. Pay particular attention to complex or confusing runway and taxiway intersections and runway thresholds. 
Some airports publish hotspots on their airport diagrams. For example, intersections, where pilots should be especially vigilant. Obviously, we should make a similar study of the airport at our destination. Once you are thoroughly familiar with the airport layout, make sure you review the signs you will encounter as you taxi toward the active runway. Some simple phrases can help you remember what the signs mean. Black square, you're there. These black signs tell you which runway or taxiway you're on right now. Yellow array points the way. These yellow signs with black arrows point you toward a runway or a taxiway or toward a destination, such as a ramp. If you see white numerals on a red sign, remember, red and white, runways in sight. This type of sign shows the hold position for the runway. Remember, yellow markings represent taxiways and white markings represent runways. There are some important things we can all do to avoid runway incursions. Things we probably all know, or have known but forgotten, or that we sometimes overlook because of distractions. Some of these things are simply plain old common sense. Always look, listen, and expect the unexpected. Minimize distractions by keeping a sterile cockpit while taxiing. Know where you are and where you're going. Never guess. Always know. And if you don't know or are uncertain, always ask. And that brings me to a word or two about the best ally we pilots have at Howard Airport, the air traffic controller. Runway 25 left at Delta position and hold traffic on the Delta. These are the professionals dedicated to leading us safely through the often complex and confusing runways and taxiways and traffic of a towered airport. This is a six-year pop turning base at the 605 freeway report turning final. The pace of air traffic communications can be confusing, even overwhelming. We should not feel hesitant to ask controllers to repeat an instruction, to ask for progressive taxi instructions if we need them. Narrow ground, Cherokee 32123, uh, request uh, progressive taxi instructions, please. November, Charlie, Bravo. If you don't know, ask. If you aren't sure, verify. When communicating with air traffic control, always listen before you transmit. Cessna 3284 Delta, holding position runway 19 right. Also, listen to what the controller is saying to other aircraft. It can have a critical bearing on your safety. Again, maintaining situational awareness at all times is key. Be sure you understand all air traffic control instructions. If you receive a clearance you don't understand or is contrary to your position on the airport, you should verify the clearance. Cessna 453 Sierra Papa. Runway 19 or full length, clear for takeoff. Air Tower, Cessna 453 Sierra Papa. Is that Bravo 3? Uh, verify we're still clear for takeoff. Cessna 3 Sierra Papa. Negative, hold your position. 3 Sierra Papa. Holding short, runway 19 at Bravo 3. Runway incursions occur most frequently when pilots enter or cross a runway without authorization. Typically, communication between the pilot and air traffic control is good. Pilots hear and read back hold short instructions and know what they're supposed to do. Uh, Cessna 93018, hold short, runway 26 right. But they cross hold short lines or taxi on the runway without authorization anyway. Always read back all hold short instructions. Era 1504, hold short, runway 6 left. Era 1504, hold short, runway 6 left. A simple roger won't do. This applies to position and hold and clearances to enter a runway as well. Cessna 80138, position and hold, runway 25 left. Cessna 80138, position and hold, runway 25 left. We can avoid most runway incursions by reducing distraction in the cockpit while taxiing, familiarizing ourselves with our departure and our destination airports, and staying alert at all times. Be sure to write down taxi instructions, but never do it on the move. It can be a distraction. The same is true with checklists. Conduct them while stopped, never on the move. Pilots, controllers, and drivers all rely on their eyes as their primary sensors. 
And the simple fact is our eyes don't work as well at night as they do during the day. The visual acuity we lose at night, combined with inconsistent cockpit lighting, canopy reflections, and possible rain, snow, or fog, make taxi, takeoff, and landing operations that seem easy during the day a real challenge at night. Pilots should observe a few simple lighting standards that will help those around them maintain their situational awareness. When taxiing into position and hold, turn on all exterior lights except landing lights. This will make your aircraft more conspicuous to other aircraft on final. Don't turn on your landing lights until you have been given clearance to take off. If you see an aircraft with its landing lights turned on, it's a clear signal that that aircraft is moving or is about to move down the runway for takeoff. When instructed to cross a runway, turn on all lights, including landing lights. The exception would be if your lights would interfere with someone holding or approaching from the other side of the runway. Also, when you line up for departure at night, consider lining up about three feet to the left or right of center line so another pilot on final can more easily distinguish your aircraft from the runway lights. Some people think that to be a professional pilot, you have to make your living flying. Well, there's another way to define professional. A professional pilot is a pilot who knows and understands the fundamentals of operating his or her aircraft, both in the air and on the ground. And the second mark of a professional is a desire to always be better, not just to be a good pilot, but to constantly improve our skills and techniques until we are better pilots. And that's what we're about here today, to review the fundamentals that will make us better pilots as we operate on the runways and taxiways of our airports. In many ways, it takes more knowledge and skill than it takes to fly. So, let's review. Always look, listen, and expect the unexpected. Know where you are and where you are going. Study the airport diagram before taxiing. Write down taxi instructions. Conduct checklists while stopped, not on the move. Off, off, off. Be absolutely familiar with airport signs. Keep a sterile cockpit to reduce distractions while taxiing. Identify complex intersections and potential runway crossings. Look both ways before crossing intersecting taxiways or runways. When communicating with air traffic control, listen before transmitting. Cessna 3284 Delta, hold short of runway 19 or left. Listen to what air traffic control is saying to other pilots. 15 Niner Echo, Charlie 130, cleared to land. Traffic holding in position. Be sure you understand all air traffic control instructions. This is 594 base turn approved, runway 25 left, good land. Ask for progressive taxi instructions if confused. Could you give me progressive taxi instructions? Cessna 3284 Delta, Merrill Ground, runway 26 right, taxi via Golf, hold short of runway 26 left. Don't be afraid to ask that an instruction be repeated. Ground 3284 Delta, say again. If you don't know, ask. If you're not sure, verify. Squawk 7302. Read back all hold short, position and hold, and runway crossing instructions. A simple roger won't do. Repeat the entire instruction. Cessna 3 Sierra Papa. Cross runway 19 or left, position and hold runway 19 or right. 453 Sierra Papa, crossing runway 19 left, and position and hold runway 19 right. Turn on all of your lights when crossing a runway. Turn on all of your lights except landing lights when taxiing into position and hold. Turn on your landing lights when cleared for takeoff. This is a signal to other pilots, air traffic control, and ground personnel that your aircraft is moving down the runway for takeoff. When lining up for departure at night, line up three feet to one side of the center line to distinguish your aircraft lights from the runway lights. Avoid distractions. Observe what's going on around you. Always know where you are and where you're going. 
If you and I observe these few common sense rules and procedures, it will go a long way toward making the runways and taxiways of our airport safer for our passengers, our fellow pilots, and ourselves. Heads up, hold short, fly right. I'm Bill Davis, Director of the Office of Runway Safety for the FAA. As a fellow aviator, I hope you enjoyed reviewing runway safety from such an exciting perspective. Our thanks to Patty for showing us that attention to safety really does begin well before we climb into our airplanes. Preventing runway collisions is our number one goal. We can accomplish this goal if we're all committed to improving our skills while operating on runways and taxiways. Thanks again to Patty Wagstaff. We wish you blue skies and safe landings.